Hello, brothers and sisters. I'm just Joe No Title, a brother in Christ, like you're a brother or sister in Christ. Amen? Amen. And we celebrate Yeshua, Jesus, the one that is and was and is to come, and there is no other master of the universe. Amen? Amen. And so today's subject is different degrees in punishment, brothers and sisters. And so if you brought your Bibles, please turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 12. We'll start reading in verse 42. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his master will make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of food in due season? Blessed is the servant whom his master will find him doing when he comes. Truly I say to you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, My master is delaying his coming, and begins to beat his male and female servants, and eat and drink and be drunk. The master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in two, and appoint him the portion with the unbelievers. And the servant who knew his master's will, and did not prepare himself or do according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he who does not know, yet committed things deserving of stripes, shall be beaten with few. For every one to whom much is given, for him much will be required. So you see, brothers and sisters, this is a believer, a servant of God, but has fallen away, and here God puts him with the unbelievers and punishes them worse than an unbeliever that doesn't know any better. Amen? Amen. So we'll look at a second passage in this regard. Please turn with me to the book of Hebrews chapter 10. We'll start reading verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be thought worthy who has trampled the Son of God underfoot? counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified a common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, the first verse said that if we sin willfully after we've received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin. And that sacrifice was Jesus dying on the cross for you and me, brothers and sisters. Without it, no one is saved. And we read, how much worse punishment do you think it will be for those who trample the Son of God underfoot and count the blood of the covenant a common thing? Brothers and sisters, don't let that happen to you. You do not want to cross Jesus. You cannot use God and get away with it. Faith and fear go together. The best example is the 10 plagues that God Almighty did to the Egyptians. And the last plague, the 10th plague, God killed all the firstborn, starting with Pharaoh's son. And God can chasten us by taking our children just like he did Pharaoh's son. God is a just God. He measures everyone by the same scale. He does not put more weight on one or the other. So never think you're so close to God that you can do whatever you want because you can't. When you are a babe in Christ, you do not have the Holy Spirit yet. You have a carnal mind. You have the mind of the world. And a carnal mind cannot serve God. You must have the mind of Christ, which is to please God and do His will. So you need to renew your mind to qualify to receive the Holy Spirit. So you need to be delivered, and you do that by seeking God with good changes to renew your mind. And when you are ready, God will renew your mind and your heart and fill you with the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. And then you need to continue pressing forward for that high calling, as Paul did, until he reached his plateau and was ready to go to heaven. Amen? Amen. In Romans chapter 1, they turned from God, and so God turned from them. And when that happens, God leaves room for them to repent. But after God has turned his back and turned them over to a perverted mind, it is hard for them to change. Some never get back to normal. Some can, but most of them never get back. 
So keep living in holiness, brothers and sisters. Amen? Amen. In Matthew chapter 12, verse 43, it reads, When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. And he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they enter and dwell there. And the last state of the man is worse than the first. If you have the gift of healing, you have the gift to cast out evil spirits. But sometimes it's best if you don't cast out the evil spirit. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 15, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Yeshua has died for our sins and has become the second covenant. If you do not give your life to him, you will be judged. Even Mary had to accept Yeshua as her Lord and Savior to be saved. Amen? Amen. And so, brothers and sisters, let us continue carrying the cross given to us by taking Christ as our master, our teacher, our example. Believe his doctrine and obey him, and we will all be with our Lord and Savior someday for eternity. Amen? Amen.